you some poultry? Okay. During our, uh, again, our trials and uh, what we were seeing with the Redmond products, on the layer barns was, I think that, that was my first goal to go after. Um, with egg prices and the g different genetics out there in the barns, you know, you got your shavers, your loans, your, uh, what is that other new one there that, yep. Um, we wanted to see if we can make sure we could have a healthier bird, see what we could do with making sure egg production stays level, egg production stays higher longer, egg quality, egg weights, and uh, out of the six barns we did, uh, roughly close to 100,000 birds total, everyone's seen extremely good success in the layer side. Um, number one, the one thing we'd noticed on this hottest guard was within days, the ammonia level in the layer barn dropped Dramatically, you could actually smell the feathers when you walked in the barn. The stools were perfect. No problems going off the conveyor into the pits at all. Egg quality. The shells were uniform. Uh, grading sheets on every barn, and right now the last barn is, its birds will be going out in four weeks. He's still running at 93 and a half, sorry, 92 and a half percent. His grayed outs are still running 91 percent between large, extra large, 2 percent jumbo, and under 6 percent medium. Like that's, that's a beautiful flock. Um, dollar wise, doing phenomenal. Um, not seeing any bent bone, not seeing less feather loss. Um, one barn did have an episode, he did add in a product that uh, no one really knew about and it really, all it really did was it jammed up all his water lines so we had four days where the birds hardly had any water did lose production, we had to clean out the water lines, and uh, they did bounce back. They didn't go back all the way, but they bounced back dramatically. And that barn, he did finish off at 91% after that big screw up with four days of basically no water, and that should have made a lot bigger dent than that. So I, I think the conditioner really helped and the salt help get the birds through that stress. Um, when adding Redmond products, I've been doing both salt and conditioner in the layer barns. Uh, very important to have your nutritionist, make sure that all the salt sodium levels are balanced properly. You know, not the lowest, not the highest, nicely in between. Again, make sure any flow agents, toxin binders, uh, other clays are taken out. Because if you don't, you end up with too much calcium, that's not a good thing. Make sure they balance that out for you properly. Uh, I really wish I could have pulled this up. But you, you'll find like the, the birds, Again, I took pictures, and like a dummy, I left them at home. Uh, some of the birds at 68 weeks old, you'd swear they were like 40 week old birds. They just held the feathers very good. Just a lot healthier bird, healthier combs. Like the combs are still nice, bright red up. And again, cost is minimal. And what you're gonna make up for difference in egg grading, that was another thing. Cr cracks, uh, rejects were point, Two one cracks, I think, were 
under one this last. Leakers are on 1%. Yeah, leakers are on one percent. And again, those are you know that's from shipping. That's from the truck. So they were doing phenomenal. And again, if you want any more information on it, please contact us. Uh, we will work with your nutritionist right from the get-go and get you going on it. Another thing, though, I, same with dairy, same with hogs, the feed conversion. Yep. Uh, we have a barn that before using to now they're using three ton less a month to feed. Yeah, 18,000 flock, 18,000 bird flock. When he hit uh, 52 weeks, he noticed the birds weren't eating as much. So then we started calculating and it was, well at the 72 weeks, that, that was three ton of feed less the pa past four weeks and yet the birds were still high producing, water intake was the same, everything. So the feed conversion was definitely there. And in a layer operation, say if you're saving two ton a week, that's a lot of money at the end of the year. Any trials in turkeys? Yes, um, we are doing the trials with turkeys right now. Um, he said it's. He said, he said that's the best turkey. He said so far for the lameness, you know, the turkeys do the. What well, he said, he hasn't got any lameness yet. So when he does the butcher out, we're gonna get the weight. We're gonna check the meat for any bruising, discoloring, bent bone, everything, to make sure we have all the data on that. I know on the broilers we've done that. There's been no bent bone, no discoloration. So you know it's working. So in the trades, did you do uh, just a song? Or both, both. <laughs> Any other questions? What level are you feeding it at? Uh, on the poultry, we are doing the uh, salt, so you're replacing your sodium, all your sodium and salt with the Redmond salt. And with your uh, conditioner, we're doing at eight kgs per ton. And then you're balancing that, that out with your calcium. Uh, 10 kgs per ton, we found there was a, uh, uh, it was almost like they were getting too much calcium at a 10 kg level. So at eight kgs, we, we dropped it and it just, it just seems to be perfect. You take out any calcium? Yep. Yeah, we, we, pulled out, we pulled out the calcium. Like I know it shows on, on the conditioner at 4% calcium, but if you look at the analysis of the trace minerals, a lot of those are forms of calcium inhibitors and boosters. So that's why you can do that. Uh, I, I, again, I would have that balance to nutrition. Just because it shows only 93% sodium, there are different forms of sodium that go in through your feet. Like what is your protein mix? Are you using any feather meal, meat meal, which has so sodiums? Vince, what you recommend? Yeah. Vince, could you answer that with the sodium? Yeah, just it's 93% salt. Yeah. Yep. So even at so it's basically a seven percent. Seven percent. Take your current salt level go up by seven percent. Yep. But the base, what I would say is just, just have your nutritionist uh, balance. Yeah. Run those diets again just to be sure. Yeah. And that's what's nice about uh, actually I work with, with lots of customers that are using <coughs> products, both the salt and the conditioner, and if you're using both together, you do pick up some salt or some sodium from the conditioner from the clay as well. And so it's it's yeah. Just, just to run that formula. Yeah, that, that's why I've been running both. Yeah. Because you, you do have that 4% salt in the conditioner. And it's pretty much straight across then and don't have to worry about that. Yeah. I actually got so far as to talking to the big turkey producer down by in Redmond. Yeah. They were 
won the salt and then they went off it and now they're on it again. Yeah. But they didn't have any results yet. Okay. And I think they were doing the seven percent. And again, it depends on their feed package. Because like I know right now, like with, with uh, some of the layer barns that have been using it, I'm saying, well, okay, you gotta replace calcium. Well, then I talk to their nutritionists. Well, we don't really use much calcium because we're using meals for the calcium profile. So that's a lot harder to play with. Yeah, the best strategy is the balance. Yep. And if, you, and if you are using, say, like on the binder, for using other, other than clay, say, yep. say if you're using a, and there's lots out there, whether it's a uh, new clay, as you see, a new clay mix, just throw some names out there for well, us, or... Uh, I work for Zeolite, and okay. five kgs per ton. Okay. What a difference in the ammonia in the barn. There is none. Yeah. Yep. So what's the least, that, like, did you do tests where, what's the least you could get away with of the conditioner, you know, per ton? That would that it would that you would still get results, or did you just go to eight ton? And no, we we did we, we we did start off at ten, and we did realize it was too much. We did drop it to eight. Yeah, and eight eight seems to work everywhere. Um, I, I, I know of, well, you know, you look at the bigger animals, like, you know, the ruminant size where they're, you know, four, four ounces per head per day. And there's other guys that, it, again, it's going to depend on what you're feeding. But eight seems to be the happy medium and that, that's out of a bunch of different barns. I ran five of the zeolite. Yeah. And if this stuff is even better, then I think... I think fine, you know, yeah. it does a great job. Yeah, you know, I've actually talked to a few guys that are adding it themselves on the farm without any nutritional help, and they're doing around the four or five. Yeah. And they say they're seeing yeah. advantages out of using it as well. The same ones like the ammonia level down and all, all that other stuff. But uh, like I said, well, like he said, the eight is has been kind of the optimal yeah. point we've seen yeah, to this point. And and that's that's with uh, what would it be? That'd be about five six different nutrition companies. That seems to be their target goal too. That they put it in at. Is eight or five? Eight. But you could certainly try five. Yep. The bottom line is balance. Yeah. Right? Biggest thing is to balance your ration. Yep. Like I was just working on a project, a project yesterday, where we actually, in the micro, it's actually a micro program, it's a 5 PG micro, it's a very small amount of uh, potassium added to the micro, no salt whatsoever added to the feed, everything's coming from the water, and yep. customers using the conditioner at 8 PGs. Quite a unique program, but it's working. Nice. That's all I have. And one, one thing, just following up on Wendell's presentation, you guys would have noticed on the bicarb, very interesting, lots of interest in bicarb yep. singing broiler turkeys, right? Yeah. So the bicarb as a sodium balancer, but also acid base, right? Acid base status uh, as related to mean growth and regular, regular growth, regular metabolism, right? That's an interesting aspect. Yep. Yeah, extremely good fiber digestion. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, in some programs, you can push a lot of bicarb in, in meat birds, right? Yep. So you're saying you're replacing the bicarb? Yeah, yep. exactly. That aspect is covered on the, on the acid base. I'm by no means an expert in acid base, but I mean, your, your modern raw 708 programs, I mean, would you agree? I mean, pretty much every ton of broiler feed maize has got bicarb out. Yep. As a way to balance chloride, right? But yep. Um, yeah, that's coming in from the resident side, and that's an interesting aspect. <coughs> like on the, uh, any of the multi-species that have been using bicarbon, we've been going with the Redmond conditioner. We've been just totally replacing the bicarbon. Have you ex 
experience stuff that uh, we'll mention in zeolite here, a, a difference in ammonia levels of zeolite compared to when you're replacing it with the, with the Mount Vernon. Uh, well, are you doing the same kind of a job? Um, better? Buffering wise, ammonia, yes. Uh, um, feed conversion, much better with the Redmond conditioner. Um, Better digestion by far, Redmond conditioner. That you're going to really notice mainly on, like on on the cattle and that, to see what grains come through on the bypass. But, but uh, you know, zeolite's been around forever and ever and ever, and, and it came in and uh, zeolite itself has the one purpose and no health benefits that the conditioner has with the trace minerals. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> with the help of a nutritionist, <laughs> we created a really good uh, uh, sheep and goat uh, mineral. Uh, the base of it is strictly Redmond salt, Redmond conditioners, got the vitamin package added to it. Um, I recently took on a 600 head uh, sheep Operation 600U. He has always had a hoof problem from day one. Um, he's been at this for, I don't know, 20 years. We got in the, the, the first batch was probably about five months ago. And uh, he feeds free choice to the breeding stock. He said his hoof problems are clearing up. He does a mix with it at 10 kgs per 990 of grains. And he said uh, he's knocking two days off market. He said just, he, he's impressed. The, the biggest thing was his hoof problem. And everyone knows how sheep and goats have hoof problems. And the natural copper levels in the salt and the little bit in conditioner sure made a huge difference and with the zinc in it also. Um, you don't, even at the mill, your nutritionist won't even have to add extra copper to that mix because there's a, it's the perfect amount of copper in that mix combination that he doesn't have to add any extra copper into, his, into the mineral and it works perfectly and, and the palatability he has to fill his troughs every day. He said the other stuff, he said there'd be three, four days where they wouldn't touch it. And he says now, he says every day he has to check his troughs. So they sure like the Redmond salt mineral. Yeah, because the copper level actually follow that up to copper. Yep. Yeah, the mix is a perfect copper level for it. Okay.